Welcome to the SCLD podcast, where we talk about all the things you can do and find at the library. Welcome. I'm Erin Dodge, the Communication Specialist with Spokane County Library District. Today with me is Sherry Boggs, our Youth Collection Development Librarian. I got that right. You did. (laughs) Also with SCLD. And we're going to be talking about genealogy today. And we're talking about some upcoming programs. We're going to talk about um, sort of the, the digital resources that we have for genealogy research and also books and other materials that you can check out from the library to help you with um, genealogy and you're doing your family tree. Now, um, Sherry, <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> you written a blog for the library um, and you've called yourself an am- a seasoned amateur <laughs> at, at genealogy and family research. So how did you become a seasoned amateur? <laughs> um, well, it started, really, it started with what I was reading when I was a kid. Um, like the two things I think led that led to that, like, were reading the little house books. Okay. Um, which I was obsessed with. And I, I remember just thinking, like, how cool would it be if I had ancestors that you know, we're on the Oregon trail. And it turns out like I did, but I didn't know that as a kid. Um, And so I think like, I just loved history at an early age. And then there was another book I read in the fourth grade called twin spell. And it's like this paranormal mystery and the kids end up um, solving it by genealogy. Like they have this great aunt that, you know, swoops in and tells them like, Oh, well you had this, cursed relative back then and this doll that's like messing up your life now Mm -hmm. was her doll and like I was just like wait what (laughs) family history when it played a role in the book show you were like that's yeah that's really interesting to me yeah and then so I just started like it Thanksgivings and Christmases were like the relatives. I would just find the oldest one <laughs> and corner them <laughs> and just ask as many questions as I could. That's um, fabulous. Yeah. I, and I, I used to have, um, like all of the notes that I took, like in my fifth grade handwriting and yeah. I've lost them over time. I wish oh, no. I still had them, but I, I did a lot of journaling, but mine was more really bad poetry. Oh, <laughs> my, my really bad fifth grade poetry. Do you still have it? I don't think so. I think it got lost along the way. I always think that would be like such a fun um, event, like to read from your yeah. diaries from like fifth grade, your poetry. I, your... I cringe thinking about it, but I bet you it would be fun. It to would just be sort yeah. of the drama. The drama. <laughs> uh. In the blog, you um, getting back to the blog. <laughs> you also write about. Um, I have three tips. For yes. beginners, for people who just starting out who are interested in, in researching their family tree and getting that information about the Oregon Trail or whatever. Yeah. And the first one you say is um, learn the basics. Yes. And these are all things that I learned the hard way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because it's really tempting. And I'm sure because you said you were on 23 and Me, like, yes. Um, it's so tempting when you first start doing this to just, it's like Pokemon. Like you just start grabbing names. Like, you know, there's my last name. There's my last name. There's right. my mom's maiden name. Grab them all. Um, and it's important to kind of think about what you're doing and okay. get, um, you know, I think looking back, what I wish I had done was kind of written down everything that I already knew just on paper. Okay. So that like once you get into the databases, um, you know, like Ancestry and so on, like, it's really important when you've got repeating names, like often, mm-hmm. like the father's name, there'll be like, you know, Frederick so-and-so this, Frederick so-and-so the second, so, third. Uh, I'm married to, into the Dodge family, okay. and you can imagine how many Dodges there are out in the world. Yes. And where that came, that name came from. Um, my birth name is Scott. You can imagine how many Scots there oh are in the world. So like, yeah, I, I, it would be tempting if you're over-enthusiastic to jump in and just like, all the Scots and all the Dodges, okay, they're all related <laughs> to me. And I mean, potentially, like, you yeah. know, a thousand years ago, maybe. But. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, okay, so uh, if you go in and you're really enthusiastic, don't just jump in, is yeah, what I'm hearing. You start just, with the basics. And and how what's what's a good way to get the basics? I'm looking at books thinking, is yes, this a good way? It is. Okay. Um, and I, again, like, I didn't look at any of this stuff when I started, okay. but I wish I had because it would explain, 
some of the terminology that you run into, like second cousin once removed, you know, oh, none right. of that made any sense no. to me. And I was just like, it's I couldn't still, be bothered to figure it out. I still have to see a chart. Like you said, I, I do have 23 in me, the DNA. Yeah. And it'll say, oh, this is your third cousin. I'm like, well, what does that mean? I always have to go in. I forget. What does that mean? Yeah. And it's like, you know, however many great grandparents ago removed. Yeah. Or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like, I just, I'm just going to hold up like. Yes. There's things like genealogy basics in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. There's like finding your roots. There's some DNA ones. I I found this on the shelf and I was just like so happy for somebody who doesn't, who doesn't maybe have, it's called, um, it's, it's one of the great courses. So DVDs, discovering your roots, introduction to geology. So if you want to watch and learn, this is an option. And it's also on um, Hoopla Digital, which is one of our digital resources. That's awesome. So you can watch on your computer. You can take this and watch it on your TV. Mm -hmm. And it's got like three or four discs. Yeah. And it gives you the basics and then it kind of goes beyond. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, when you're ready for it. Get out of the library. (laughs) (laughs) There's great stuff there. I really liked this one, Guide to Genealogy. It's by National Geographic. It's actually for kids. And I'm a big fan of... If you want to learn something fast, grab a kid's book, a kid's oh, nonfiction book, because yeah. it really distills it down to the most basic concepts. Well, and if you had that book when you were a child or, oh, you know. I would have lost my mind with right? excitement. But you would have maybe, <laughs> maybe it would have helped to prepare you to how to do yeah. your searches and, and not just dive in and grab all the names. <laughs> <laughs> Willy nilly. <laughs> yeah, um, it's awesome. I think um, I, I also want to promote learning the basics because we do have an upcoming program. Oh, so I'm, I, yes. I have it here. I have the name and everything. It's it's called Genealogy for Beginners. <laughs> <laughs> and it's led by Donna uh, Potter Phillips. And um, basically you can go online and uh, I, we can go to scld.org forward slash genealogy dash programs. And it'll pull up all those. And they're February through May. It's kind of sprinkled throughout um, seven or eight different libraries and find the time that works for you. Yeah. So that's another way is to come in person and take a, take a class. I know. I might, I might come to one of those because <laughs> I'm still learning. I was going to say there's a lot to it. There's a lot of different things, um, places you can go to get this information. Um, I, I am not heavily into um, searching my family history because it's a little intimidating for me. Yeah. I feel like it, so I, I, but I've, I've peaked. <laughs> so um, anyway, so okay, so we have learning the basics, developing a method, which you is tip two, and you sort of talked about that a little bit. Yeah, you want to delve into what developing I, a, um, a method. Because of the excitement of looking these things up, you know, like sometimes I would be on a quest to find something about like one relative, like. I have a great grandfather that, for whatever reason, completely changed his name, and I was able to okay. figure that out, like through DNA results and okay. kind of looking at old church records. Like, and I would be bent on figuring out what his story was, and along the way, I would find things about his relatives, and I, but I didn't save them. I didn't oh. write any of it down, and then later, I would be wanting to chase that angle yes. again, and I, I was just like. You have to start. You all have over to start. Again. Yeah, and so like I keep a. It's just a Google Sheets document, okay. um, like the date where I found the thing. If there's any kind of online document, like sometimes you'll find birth records and mm-hmm. so on, you can save that on Ancestry to like what's called your shoebox. I think on Family Search it's called something else, but you can download and save that stuff. So okay. you've got it. Yeah. Um, so there's keeping a record of what you've done. And then sometimes I like to make kind of a plan for what I'm going to work on that day. Okay. Because it's, it's so easy to get distracted. Yes. So I, we do have Ancestry um, at the library, but it's yes. the library edici- edition. So you don't get to make an account um, to save those searches. But I think what you can do is sort of an alternate, as you can think about, like you can make, save the information, like sit, print it to a PDF yes. and then create it like a digital folder. And I know some people want to print everything out and that's fine too. You could create the PDF, print it out if you want to have like a, a binder, like a physical paper. That is so smart. The, yeah. I, Cause I was going to say they have forms that you can download, but I love the idea of filling it out and saving it as a PDF. Yes. That is genius. Well, what you can guys? I say? <laughs> I have a good idea every now and then. <laughs> so
So yeah, so it, but the, for um, Ancestry Library Edition, um, you do need to come into the library to use that. And the same thing, we have FamilySearch.org. Um, that's also for in library. You, um, all of these you can uh, also pay for an account mm-hmm. and use it at home with that. But if you want to use it for free, and the other thing that you can use from home um, or on the go or in the library that we have in our digital library is Heritage Quest. Yes. And that one, um, again, I'm not sure what the saving is or, or how you, probably the same thing. You want to just kind of make print PDFs of your files and, and save those mm-hmm. however you want to do that. But I like that idea of kind of have a plan of and record what you're doing. Yes. Because um, otherwise, if you're like, oh, what was that information? you got to start all over again yeah. and try to remember. And it's it's important when it's, you know, like if you're still working and this is just something you do when you've got a spare minute, mm-hmm. like lots of time can elapse and you'll forget like. <laughs> you could go a couple of weeks to like a month later where you're not able or to six get months, back. Or, you know, or six yeah. months. Yeah. And yeah. How, uh, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Cause I think for retirees, I, I think it's important to keep documenting, but like it's easier to remember from day to day what you were doing. Yes. If you're, if you're able to do it day to day. Yeah, exactly. Right. Great. And then you have, um, the last tip is be prepared for oh, surprises. Yes. Surprise! <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> um, and th- there's there's two aspects to that I wanted to talk about, and one isn't quite as titillating as the other one. <laughs> the first one is just I think people are surprised to find out that not everything is digitized and online. Right. Um, like it's taken a lot of time to round sources up and digitize them. You know, when I was getting my master's degree in librarianship, I one of my jobs was at the um, oh, Museum of History and Industry in Seattle. Okay. And people would bequeath things to them, like this giant box of sc- scrapbooks of, <laughs> of the railroad. Oh, wow. And luckily they were of Eastern Washington. I'm from Eastern Washington, so I actually recognize some of the place names and um, – you know, but that but it has none to be digitized. If it's, exactly, if it's in print or if it's something that's like a photograph or something, you, it's not online until it's put online. Yeah, and sometimes you can be lucky, and there's a finding aid online which okay. will say what's in this box. So even if what's in the box isn't digitized, um, you know, if you wanted to, you could take a trip to wherever right. has this stuff. Yeah. You know, you could at least see that it's in this box on this shelf. Right. Yeah. So the other surprise, okay. <laughs> and this is the big I, disclaimer. I know which one it is. I know. It's the <laughs> someone you always thought was your father, maybe is it your father kind of surprises. And yeah. they they have disclaimers on all the big sites like 23andMe and Ancestry. Ancestry. You know, the, they're not legally responsible for... For the information you find out. <laughs> exactly. So I have a half-sister that I really didn't know about till I was an adult. Luckily, oh. uh, my mom knew. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Um, but luckily, she she want, she reached out wanting to get to know me before I did Twenty Three and Me. Oh, because if Aaron. I had done Twenty Three and Me first and been like, "Who's this person?" Um, <laughs> Hi, Cassandra. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, mom, who is this? Like, she'd be, like, oh yeah, by the way. <laughs> From my I was waiting side. till like, you were old <laughs> enough to tell you. <laughs> Thanks for waiting till I was thirty five. <laughs> But anyway, um, that would have been a big surprise. Like I yeah. knew, I knew my father was out of the picture and all of that. Like, mm-hmm. so, I, but I knew he was there, and um, I did not know about her until much later in life. Yeah, so. it's it's common. Like yeah. I have talked to so many people who have discovered family members they never yeah. knew that they had, and yeah, yeah, it's. Well, so and, be prepared. <laughs> and it, it, it feels like sometimes some of those family secrets, that's the secret, right? Yeah. There's somebody in the family who maybe at the time they were born, they were put up for adoption for whatever reason. Yes. So there's some different yeah. things that happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> be prepared for surprises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that story they told you might not be true. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it, it can be a mystery. Like I, I have someone that's contacted me um, – She's closely enough related that she could be a niece, but we can't okay. figure out where. Right. And, and wow. you know, like someone that's been helping her with her genealogy thinks that maybe my dad had a little brother that he never knew about that was put up for adoption, okay. which is quite possible because my dad was born in the 30s. It was the Great Depression. Yes. His mother already had like twins and like a five-year-old. Right. And she might have just been, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Um, but it's... 
yeah, it's like trying to put those pieces together. Like yeah. you've got a little bit of the DNA, you've got a little bit of what you know about the family history, right? And just go in with what you got. Go with what you got. <laughs> <laughs> so we did talk about those three resources, um, mm-hmm. Ancestry Library Edition, Family Search, and um, Heritage Quest. And I... To get to those, you can go straight to our website, to the digital library, or you can I give you a link. You can go directly to it. It's sclu.org forward slash genealogy. And that's it. And it'll take you right to those three resources <laughs> um, and maybe a few others that, that could help you with your search. So They're I wanted, great. I wanted to give those. Um, if you want genealogy books, mm-hmm. um, we have a link that's sclu.org forward slash genealogy slash book or dash books sorry so um that will just pull up a search in our catalog that with the term genealogy and you get you'll find all of these things all these great books oh my gosh um there's there's a couple for um about dna too that that kind of talk about if you're going to do a dna test and and to look at family history and ancestry like some things to look out for and be re- prepared for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that aspect's harder for me to understand. You know, when they talk about Sendemorgans and, you know. Right. The science of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm more interested in the names and, you know, where people lived. Where they lived and, yeah. and what they were doing at the time of the census. Like, what was their job and how yeah. many people were in the household. Like, ooh. And, yeah. Yeah. You, I saw you were going for another I book. Was. <laughs> I that, was going to ask if we had time. We have to- We do. Okay. I, we found this on the shelf. Erin found this on the shelf okay, and brought it, and I'm it. so glad that she did. <laughs> so one of the things that, and um, I think it was, um, well, I, I can't remember now, but we had an author visit a, a few years back, and she did a lot of uh, family searching, and she was talking about going to cemeteries. Yes. And, and getting, and she also wrote historical fiction. So she was, you know, um, very much into finding a history and seeing, um, and one of the places she would visit would be cemeteries. Yeah. And so the Family Tree Cemetery Field Guide, How to Find, Record, and Preserve Your Ancestors' Graves. So cool. It, so if, if that's part of your journey, mm-hmm. I check this book out and, yeah. and see what how it can help. There's different clues on tombstones, like even some of the okay. decorations. Um, you know, if you have an ancestor that was part of a fraternal organization. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, like you've got the woodcutters and I'm, the, Mason. the Masons, you know, you'll often see that iconography on yeah. the headstones. Right. Um, yeah, it's fascinating. Well, that's so if you can't find what you're looking for at the <laughs> library, like in the catalog, come in or call mm-hmm. because staff will look for it for you. And mm-hmm. if we can get it through interlibrary loan, we'll find it, you know. That's another resource. Yeah. Because um, sometimes there will be just this one of a kind book on the history of, you know, say your Mayflower ancestor. And, right. and, you know, sometimes every now and then you can get a library to, to loan that. And if they can't, sometimes they can photo or the, photocopy some, the pages that you some want. Some digital or something. Yeah. Yeah. Photocopy. The only thing we can't do is microfilm. Okay. And that sometimes comes up. So just to let people know. Sometimes it does take a journey to the area. Yeah. That where the things happened. So, mm-hmm. like you said, when you're heading to Seattle where the things are donated, sometimes you have to take a trip. If yeah. You're gonna I'm track trying to it convince down. my mom we need to go to Switzerland. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's go see I'll where I'll go the, with you. <laughs> I know where our people are from. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Well, let's see. I think we talked about everything. I know, I'm looking at my notes. Did so I talk did about the, se- the other course, Genealogy and Your DNA? Oh, the no. other library yeah. program? Okay. So that one is taught by Linda Keenan. So both Linda and Donna, who are teaching these gene- genealogy courses, they're in, they're, they're professional. <laughs> so they're in the, the different societies, um, for, and they, they know all the tips and tricks. So mm-hmm. you're getting really good advice when you come to these library programs. And, um, so go online. I forget if there's registration, if there is sign up and then yeah. come on in. Get in so. there. Um, and we also have the Gale courses. That's right. Which I took that and I, I feel like the inf- um, like the lessons just need to be updated. Like sometimes the references are to old internet technology. Okay. Um, but it was great because it's pieced out into little chunks. And so you can come home from work and spend like half an hour and learn a new thing. And so I learned all these things about military records that I never knew oh, wow. and like ship logs. And yeah. So There's that's a, a good thing. a lot of different databases in even Ancestry and Heritage mm-hmm. Quest that you could really take a deep dive down. 
Yeah. Yeah. So Fun. wonderfully. So we have a lot, a lot yeah. here at the library for you to do. Uh, just fill out your family tree. Mm-hmm. Get to know your ancestors. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Jerry. Oh, you bet. Thanks for having me, Erin. You're welcome. And thank you for watching and listening, and we will see you next time. Thank you for being here today. If you enjoyed today's topic and want to be notified of upcoming episodes, please like and subscribe. To learn more about Spokane County Library District, our programs, resources, and services, you can go to scld.org.